This lesson deals with solving an RC charging circuit. You can find these notes in the course ebook in chapter 5, starting on page 18. Given a circuit with a battery, a switch, and a resistor and a capacitor, where this switch goes from being an open to a short at time t equals 0. Could you find the voltage across the capacitance and the current through the resistance versus time? In our last video, we had an algorithm for solving one capacitor circuits for any voltage or any current. So we're going to use that to develop a six-step algorithm to attack these kind of problems. Since we have only one capacitor, we have a form of a solution for any voltage or any current that is some A plus B times e to the minus quantity T minus T zero over tau. I'm going to solve for two things here, the capacitor voltage and the resistor current. I'll call this constant A1 and B1, and then for this equation, A2 and B2. Now my value of T zero is equal to zero, so I'm going to have e to the minus just t over tau. a1 and b1 and a2 and b2 are usually different values, but tau is common to both the voltage and the current equations. I want to sketch this voltage and this current versus time, but really for all time, where t less than t0, which is equal to 0, and then greater than that. So I'm going to try to find, in the next step, what I call the pre-switching conditions. And that would be the value of these two variables at t equals t0 minus. In our particular case, t0 is equal to 0. This just means a little bit before the event occurs. The capacitor has been in a circuit for a long time with DC sources. It looks like an open circuit. And that's because I is equal to C dV dt. If we have no changing in voltage, the current's equal to zero, and that's an open circuit. The switch is also open. I won't be able to solve for this because I really got the voltage in a circuit with two open circuits. But let's assume that this is a brand new capacitor that has no initial condition, just simply bought it and hooking it up to the circuit. It would have zero volts across it. We'll look at other examples in the supplemental problem sets where that's not the case and we can actually solve for it. Then what about the current in the resistor for t equals zero minus? Well, this is an open circuit and so is this, so this has got to be equal to zero. In step three, I'm going to find the initial conditions, the value of the capacitor voltage and the resistor current, just as we pass through the changing of the states of the switch. That's going to be equal to zero plus. This is a little bit in time, a little smidgen beyond zero. The switch is now closed. The voltage across the capacitor at t equals zero plus has to be the same as zero minus because it can't jump instantaneously. If it does, then you have to provide an infinite current, and of course we can't do that. But it's equal to what it was before, which was zero, and that's gonna be a one plus b one times e to the zero, but e to the zero is equal to one. I know that these two constants add up to zero, so they're negative of each other, but I need one more equation to solve for this. Now likewise for the current and the resistance, the current in this resistor, once this switch closes, is gonna be this node voltage minus this node voltage divided by 1k. 12 volts minus 0 over 1k, that's 12 milliamps. That's going to be equal to a2 plus b2 times e to the 0, just a2 plus b2. Here it's interesting to note that the current in the resistor is going to jump from 0 to 12 milliamps as we pass through 0. So current in a resistance can change instantaneously, in fact it can, and also in a capacitance. But the voltage across the capacitance can't. We're going to use that as a boundary condition. Step four of my algorithm will be to find the final conditions. This is the value of our variables as t approaches infinity. Capacitor voltage and the current through the resistance. Our switch is closed at t equals zero. And now if we wait long enough, this capacitance will look like an open circuit again. That means that the current in the resistor is also the current in the open circuit, and that's going to be equal to zero. And that's going to be equal to a2 plus b2 times e to the minus infinity, or just a2. The capacitor voltage, since there's no drop across here, 0 times 1k, this voltage is the same as this. In other words, the rise in voltage is 12, the drop is 0 times 1k plus the capacitor voltage. So the capacitor voltage is 12 volts. And that's going to be equal to a1 plus b1 times e to the minus infinity, or just a1. I have expressions for my constants a1 and a2, b1 and b2. The last thing I need is the Thevenin resistance seen by the terminals of the capacitance, with all the independent sources set equal to 0. This is going to happen after the switch closes. This is a short circuit, and now we're going to set the independent source equal to zero, so we're going to short that. Take the capacitor off and look back in the terminals. And that's our Norton or Thevenin resistance. It's going to be equal to 1,000 ohms. Tau is the product of 1K and 1 microfarad. Now, what's resistance? We say it's ohms, but it's actually volts per amp, and capacitance is amp seconds per volt. The volts cancel, the amps cancel, and tau has units of seconds. So let's call it a time constant. 1,000 times 1 micro is 10 to the minus 3, or 1 millisecond. And the last step in my algorithm is to find the solution, whatever you're asked to solve for. 
we have that a1 plus b1 is 0. We have that a1 was 12, so b1 must be minus 12. So the capacitor voltage is a1 plus b1 times e to the minus t over tau. 12 minus 12 e to the minus t over 1 millisecond. And that's going to have units of volts. And this equation is valid for t greater than or equal to 0. Because as we pass through 0, the value of this voltage does not jump instantaneously. And we know that the value for t less than 0 was equal to 0. In other words, when you plug in t equals 0, you get 12 minus 12. For the resistor current, we had that A2 plus B2 was 12 milliamps. A2 was 0, therefore B2 is 12 milliamps. The resistor current is A2 plus B2 times e to the minus t over tau. So just 12 times e to the minus t over 1 millisecond. And I pulled the milli out over here. You can leave it over here. It means the same thing. And this is valid for t greater than 0, because this is actually going to jump in value. When t was less than 0, we found that the current was equal to 0. And then when t is equal to 0 plus, we have e to the 0. So that's going to be equal to 1. So you get 12 milliamps. So you're going to go from 0 to 12 milliamps instantaneously. Let's plot the results we had on the previous page. So here I sketched the capacitor voltage and the resistor current. We started out at 0 volts for the capacitor, and we eventually will get to 12 volts. But I found that in about 5 milliseconds, I was pretty much there. So it's a graph of my data versus time. The current in the resistor went from 0 to 12 milliamps, and then began to decrease. As T approaches infinity, will eventually approach 0. But at about 5 milliseconds, it was very close to 0. Let's look at those numbers a little more carefully. Here I've got e to the minus t over tau. When t is equal to tau, I have e to the minus 1, and that's 0.3679. When t is equal to 2 tau, I have e to the minus 2, and that's 0.1353. e to the minus 3 is 0.0498. e to the minus 4 is 0 0.0183, and e to the minus 5 is 0 0.0067. As t is increasing, this exponential is decreasing. The capacitor voltage at t equals 0 minus was the same as 0 plus was 0 volts, and the current went from 0 to 12 milliamps. If we evaluate the capacitor voltage at one time constant, we have 12 minus 12 times e to the minus t over tau, but now t is equal to tau, and that's going to be equal to 0.3679. The capacitor voltage started out at 0, it's now at 7.572 volts. The current in the resistor is going to be the 12 milliamps times e to the minus 1, so it's going to be 0.3679, so it's dropping to 4.418 milliamps. And then at five time constants, the value of e to the minus t over tau is e to the minus 5 is a very small number. And so our capacitor voltage is getting very close to 12 volts, and our current is getting very close to 0. Let's do that as a percentage. On one time constant, we went from 0 volts to 7.572 volts. Now we're heading towards 12, so what percentage of the final value are we within? Take 12 minus the 7.572 divided by 12 times 100%. We're within 37% of the final value. The current in the resistance, we started out at 12, and we dropped to 4.418 milliamps in one time constant. Expressing that as a percentage, we've dropped by 63%. These are common numbers that people describe what happens in one time constant. Now in five time constants, the capacitor voltage is 11.92, and that's within 0.7% of the final value. The current has dropped from 12 milliamps to 0.08 milliamps, and that's a 99.3% drop from its initial value. Although we talked about finding the capacitor voltage and the resistor current as t approaches infinity, we can really say that that's approximately five time constants. Infinity is relative to the circuit, not to us. As far as the circuit goes, when we get to five milliseconds, it's pretty much the same as if we waited a long, long time. But our circuits, as we analyze them, we're going to basically say that t approaching infinity is roughly five time constants. And this is an RC charging circuit example.